It's time to get your geek on with Dave Gramellion. She is Mara Jade. That, I mean, that really is the only intro that you need for the lovely and talented Shannon McRandall, who is our guest now here on Get Your Geek On. Whoop, uh oh. Yep. Speaking of technical difficulties, there we go. There's no more music. <laughs> Shannon, how are you doing? Hey, guys. Great. How are you? Uh, we're uh, fantastic. This is uh, wonderful that you were able to call in. Uh, how are you feeling lately? Um, better. Better. It's, it's a long road, but everyone, as you know, has, has just done an outpouring of love and support. So that makes things so much easier for me to know that I have such a huge family that, that's pushing me to get better. Now, for those of y'all who are not familiar, let's do a brief rundown. In between the original trilogy and the prequel trilogy, when they were released in theaters, there was what we call the... And in there, we got introduced to a feisty, wonderful Emperor's Hand, dark yet light yet want to date her yet worried she'll kill me character who by the name of Mara Jade <laughs> and they chose you to be the model to be the the face the body the lightsaber wielding uh person that we've all come to know and love and that was back in 1999 or at least according to, to Wikipedia it was yes, 99. Yes it's so, crazy right the person who took a photo and made a 20-year career out of it that's just <laughs> nuts <laughs> Only in Star Wars could that happen. So look, looking back on it now, and it's it's unreal to say 20 years since then, but yeah. what, what is your most vivid memory about being Mara Jade? Oh, wow. I, you know, I was thinking about that earlier, and I don't think that I have one that is more vivid or better or more spectacular, um, but there are a number of different ones that, you know, you kind of just, pinch yourself and go, oh, my gosh, this is really happening. Um, an example would be the, the first time I made an appearance was at um, one of the big gaming conventions that Decipher used to put on. So kudos to Decipher for coming up with the whole thing. Um, I made an appearance, of course, as Mara, and they didn't know that I was coming that day. So I'm in the suit, have the lightsaber, you know, I've got bodyguards and everything. Someone gets a glimpse of me out of the corner of their eye, and you just hear the whole room stop, and someone says, there's Mara Jade, and it, it's like, oh, my gosh, what did I get myself into? <laughs> it was fabulous and terrifying all at the same time. But like you said, 20 years later, Wow. Now, I like how she went with the first appearance instead of when you met Mark Hamill, your yeah. what, your hubby. Uh, what, <laughs> what was what was that like? Well, um, that that took a little finagling by some um, wonderful and very anxious fans. They really wanted to push uh, for Mara and Mark or uh, uh, Luke to meet. Um, so they had me in the audience at a comic convention that we were both at in New Jersey, and I cannot remember what year that was. It was sometime after I started, but um, I don't think that he really knew much about what was going on in our universe, the expanded universe. You know, he only knew about the movies, and he kind of did his own thing for a really long time. Um, so he was on stage answering some questions and someone asked him, you know, Hey, do you know that your comic book wife is here? And he's like, what are you talking about? <laughs> no, like really she's here. She's right there. And they pointed to me and brought me up on stage and the entire, I mean that, well, it was, you know, Mark Hamill, the whole place was standing room only. But um, I think he was kind of in shock. We we caught him by surprise big time that day. I don't know if he was really happy about it. He went along. He was a good sport. But um, 
I don't know that that he felt like he was very prepared for that. So, I mean, it worked out wonderfully for us to say we got the upper <laughs> hand on Luke that day. But um, yeah, it, that was a huge that was a huge deal for a lot of us. You know, old school fans, expanded universe fans, people who'd waited forever for Mark to come back to sign. It was really a big deal for everybody. Now, the speaking of the expanded universe, your universe, that was pretty much discarded by Lucasfilm back in 2012 so that they could mm-hmm. have a little creative freedom going forward. That also means that Mara Jade was shelved, and while they have brought back some elements of the EU, it's probably not likely we're going to see Mara Jade on the big screen. Are you kind of disappointed in the lack of Mara in the new content? You know what? That's that's a that's a double-edged sword right there. Um, yes, as a fan, I am I'm disappointed I don't get to see this character that I've fallen in love with separate from, you know, my portrayal of her. All of the work that Timothy did, you know, in the trilogy was just amazing and the comics are amazing. This character is just she's mighty. And just for the record, I like bad Mara more than I like good Mara. <laughs> just so we're clear on that. So do um, we. So do we. <laughs> yeah, I think I think that everybody does. Um, she's just so much more fun. But I like her the way she is. I don't like the way she died. That's a whole other conversation. But um, I like the Mara that we fell in love with when Tim Tim wrote her. She was amazing. So I don't know that I want someone else messing with her. Yet on the other hand, you know, like a lot of people, I'm really upset. It, they've kind of messed with our story here. We're the people that, being fans, I'm talking fangirl here, we're the people that bought the books, bought the comics, bought the toys, played the games. We kept them in business between the original trilogy and the second trilogy. So I feel kind of like we kind of got, you know, I don't know, gypped or something. But it is what it is. And I think I, I, me personally would rather stay on the safe side, let let her be, and let's see how everything plays out. And like you said, there's a little creative freedom going on right now. So she could pop up in her own standalone somewhere down the road. Um, hopefully when I'm dead and gone so I don't have to cry that it wasn't me. <laughs> Well, okay, all right. So if they do bring her back, she's good. She's got to be like the real Mara that we can't bring back any, you know, half Mara. Got to be full on. Yeah, we don't. We want. We don't want Mara to be a valley girl cheerleader or you know, or or all complete brooding with no sense of fun to her. Uh, No, no, no. The the real Mara Jade. We need. Yeah, we need Tim consulting on that on that film. We absolutely need him there. Because he, oh gosh, when I first met him, I was so scared, and he did not like me. I mean, all my worst fears. You are not the Mara that I pictured. You are not what I wrote about. And then as we worked together over the years, he softened up a little bit. He's like, okay, I can see it. Okay. So what did he so picture he, at first? If it wasn't you, I mean, the, the literal picturesque Mara, what was he picturing? Um, It just wasn't me. My hair color wasn't right. He said he had a very specific process when he went. I mean, he is the bomb when it comes to writing. He gets down to detail and researches that detail. And he's an award-winning author for a reason. Um, He had a specific color hair. And had I known exactly what that was, my gosh, I'd have died at that color. (laughs) (laughs) Now, I'm the same way. This is actually, and I've made this argument before on air, that I don't want to see Mara Jade on the big screen because I believe it will only divide the fan base further because the instant she appears and opens her mouth... Every fanboy is going to go, that's not the Mara Jade I was expecting. Her voice doesn't sound right. like that. Her hair doesn't look like that. Boom, ba um ba um And, of course, they'd start tearing it apart. So I like that she stays as we picture her. I kind of kind of like that. Uh, yeah, and I, I think a lot of us that really, truly appreciate what is now not canon, which I don't like. I think it can all work under the same umbrella if people stop saying that. People who um, <clears throat> are in charge need to stop saying things like that. Um, we leave her the way she is, and, you know, honestly, I think the best thing they could do for her is maybe do her own story and do it on TV as a cartoon. It would be so much fun. And then we don't have to worry about, 
you know, in real life, that actress isn't who I thought or, you know, shoot, that's not what I pictured for the last 20 years. You know, hey, that's Filoni. not what I was thinking. Dave Filoni, are you listening? Sometimes. You listening, Filoni? Come on now. <laughs> <laughs> now, speaking of, of these strong women characters, we've been getting a lot of them lately in Star Wars, really as, as never before. Before it was, okay, we have Leia and Padme and that's it. But now we have Jen Erso, now we have Daisy Ridley, now we have uh, we, yeah. all, all these other characters that are coming forward. Is this, you know, where, where you stand up and you say, yeah, it's about time, or do you think it's too much, too fast, too soon? Okay, so now I knew you were going to ask me something about that. So what I did this morning was put a couple of articles that I did not write. I found um, something on YouTube and I think something on um Oh, gosh, it was from Newsweek, I believe. And I put them on my uh, Shannon McRindle is Mara Jade Facebook page. And I asked um, Mara Jade fans to weigh in on this. And, man, that started. That was just, that was wildfire. Uh-oh. I had to get in there and do some mediating today. Um, but it was fun, too, because I realized that, like me, a lot of people are torn. Yes, it is about time that we see women in more powerful roles, roles that are equal to what we truly do in daily life. I mean, women do everything now. We fly into space. We, you know, we swim swim the deepest depths of the sea. We write and produce and direct, you know, Oscar-winning movies. We do amazing things. So why doesn't this translate into movies and television? But I think that slowly in the last few years, it it really has. Writers have been writing for a stronger woman, for a more prominent woman. What I think, and I'm going to get a lot of hate mail for this, I think that under the new almost all-female direction um, of everybody that's putting into um, Lucasfilm and Disney right now, there are a lot of women in charge. I think that rather than having more women You've got to have women who have great stories. I'd rather have one Princess Leia or one Mara Jade than 15 women whose characters I don't care about because I, as a fan, want to fall in love with the character. It's not about quantity. It's about quality. And on, as far as I'm concerned with what I see and what I'm reading and what's likely to draw me back to another movie or book or comic or toy, I want it to really be a quality story. I want to feel like I did when I was 13 and I went to see Star Wars for the first time. And I think that um, they did a little bit of that with Rogue One, but I did not feel that with, you know, the next two of this newest trilogy. I just, I felt like it was, hey, it's it's a politically correct thing to do right now, so let's drown out everything with women. And It just kind of made me sad because the whole point of Star Wars is this wonderful, in-depth, rich story. And I just, it was a miss for me. Now, I feel feel that I I probably be on point then, judging by what you're saying, in that you're probably not the biggest Rose fan out there. Yeah, no. (laughs) Because I'm kind of the same way. She was just kind of there. And yeah, 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 and you know, they do wonderful things, so maybe they have an idea, and it's you know, something else will develop from everything they're doing right now. We don't know, but I always go with quality over quantity, and I felt like, and y'all, y'all are gonna be mad, there's my southern accent coming out, y'all. <laughs> um, I just watched the last movie this morning. I was too sick to go see it with my family on opening night, and I didn't. Um, I just had not felt like I wanted to watch it after my kids came home and said, "Mom, we don't think you're going to like it. It was a good movie, but we don't think you're going to like it." Oh well, then so there, I there go the this morning. There go the rest of my questions. Then I got to know what was your first uh, impression. Um, it's overwhelming with all the people who kind of do nothing, and I didn't like that. I just didn't like it, and um, I've said this, it's, it's, uh, I've said it before on my Facebook page, I get it that you need to kill Han Solo, who, by the way, I love and would have picked him over Luke any day. I love him. Pete, you know that. Mm. Um, 
Um, I get it that characters have to die and that a new generation has to step forward. However, I think when you kill off a character as important as Han Solo or Luke Skywalker or if I ever come to be Marjay, those people, it really needs to be what we, the fans, know the end of that character would be. They would go down fighting. I mean, tooth and nail, last claw, last breath, it would be an end-all, be-all battle to top every battle we've ever seen. An Alamo so fight. Think, <laughs> absolutely, that Alamo times 10 in space. Yes! Absolutely. Yeah, and to see Luke kind of just uh, at the end and to have Han die and then in a part of that story that was so similar to a scene in another movie, I just felt kind of gypped. I don't, you don't need to pull at my heartstrings. I'm going to go see the movie. I want you to continue that journey for me. I want to fall in love again. That's what I want when you put a new movie back on. I I didn't need to see all that stabby mess. That's just, you know, we know those characters and they wouldn't have died that way. Now, uh, But that's only my take on it. Miss Jade, uh, if I can call you Miss Jade. Uh, (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> one of one of our our minion here, Peter Gonzalez, his favorite memories was working with you during Celebration Four. Not yeah. sure if you remember him at all. Of course I do. He knows I do. I love Peter to death. He was a fabulous assistant, um, helping me to get my geek on all that whole weekend, um, make sure that I had everything I needed. There, were, you know, those minds get crazy. Need a break every few minutes. He gets an A plus 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 for assistance. And probably now I he's mean, getting he's getting an A plus plus for turning I'm very red him. right now. <laughs> Pete Hockey knows this. He knows. I love him dearly. And one of my favorite Star Wars moments, we were talking about that earlier, was when I got to meet um, back then. I think it was pretty much the entire San Antonio fan club, wasn't it? Yeah. Um, yeah. D- during that time, you know, because we were still in the yeah. process of growing. Yeah, yeah it was, well, wow. it was pretty big back then because I think y'all had all your family and friends with you. <laughs> I think so, yeah, okay. including Chewie, yeah, which I still that have. Was, that was a wonderful convention, and I just fell in love with that fan club. And I, I've stayed, we've all stayed in touch over the years through better and worse, and we've been through a lot of worse with mm-hmm. all my friends in San Antonio. But, um, We've been through a lot of good stuff together, too. And like I said, we, we stay in touch. I talk to these guys on Facebook. We, you know, back and forth at Christmas and birthdays. And they are just this little group of Star Wars fans. And I guess they're really not little anymore, this giant group of Star Wars fans. It kind of, um, it kind of embodies the whole entire Star Wars experience. It brings people from every walk of life, from every educational background from every aspect and draws them all together and gives us something similar to love and talk about and be a part of that really um it bridges every gap there is and uh, peter gave me that when he introduced me to the san antonio fan club i just i love them dearly i consider them family that's i consider awesome. pete family that's so cool. All right. Well, Shannon, we want to thank you for taking time out of your day here to call us here on 930 AM, The Answer Talk Radio. Uh, we hope you have a very pleasant rest of the day, and uh, can't wait to see you sometime. Thank you so much, and thank you guys so much for having me on. I'm, I'm truly happy that, like you said, 20 years later, it is just the coolest thing. So big hugs to all you guys, and uh, keep in touch, and thank you so much for having me on. Awesome. Thank you. All right, so that was Shannon McRandall, who is Mara Jade here, our guest on 930 AM, The Answer, and get your geek on.